let's talk about one of the limitations of the slicer visual in Power BI. You don't get an all button. It will show the values that you've entered in here. So if we have a quick look at this column, I've got a list of the suburbs in a little table around Sydney, the latitude and longitude, the added adult population and the distance from the centre of Sydney. And I've put that into a little single page report and I've used the suburb column to populate this slicer. The problem is I don't have an all button so I can collect, select sorry, individual suburbs and when I click on them I'll get this but when I go back to I want to show all I have to deselect everything and I get the all which is a little bit annoying and I think it's counterintuitive for people who are not familiar with Power BI they get a report and they want to see this all but they don't realize how they have to do it and uh, Microsoft does provide an all select option but it's not really a suitable approach what it does after giving us a select all button is it actually selects all they are actually selected so then you can start deselecting them by clicking on them or reselecting them it's not very neat i think the reason that microsoft haven't improved this is because they think they've solved it so they've moved on to something else and they haven't solved it so there is a way around it what we can do is use power query in the uh, transform data feature of power bi which takes you into a data modeling world um, it is quite a bit different. Um, it's not that scary, um, but um, it is different. Uh, there's a lot of prompts in it that help you work your way around this. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create a number of additional tables based on the existing table, which will give me the ability to pop an all button in here. So let's head into transform data, this interface. And what you're actually looking at here is some power query language which doesn't really look like anything that you've come across before, probably. So how are we going to solve this problem? So we're going to do these steps. First of all, I'm going to duplicate this table and I'm going to rename it. And it's going to become called suburbs all. I'm going to remove all but this column here. So see, remove other columns. And then I'm going to add a column to it and it's going to be a custom column. And we're going to call this column, we'll call this suburbs underscore all. It is, and what's going in this column is actually the word all in inverted commas, simple as that. And there it is. Okay, we're going to duplicate that table again and we're going to call this one suburbs copy. Suburbs copy. Now we don't want that anymore. We're going to remove that column. We're going to put in a different one. We're going to put in a duplicate of the first column. And I'm going to call this one also here suburbs underscore all. So if we look at the two of them, they have suburbs all and suburbs all, different contents, but the same column names, which means that I can append this, I can stick this table to the end of that one. So we do that by going to home, append queries, I won't make a new one, I'll just join one to the other as it stands. So we're going to bring in two tables, we're currently on the suburbs copy, so what I'm going to do is connect it to suburbs all. We say, okay, there we have it. Okay, so then I'm going to make another copy quickly. Here we go. And I'm going to rename this one Suburbs Slicer. And this will become apparent why in a moment. And we don't need uh, this column anymore, so I can remove that column. And I also don't want any duplicates, so we will remove duplicates. Now, I don't need the suburbs all later. It was only giving me data for the subsequent tables. So we're going to remove that from the enable load. It still gets pulled in. It still gets used in the building of these other tables, but it doesn't go back to the data model because it doesn't do us any favors there. So it's going to have a think about that for a sec. Okay. So we have a look in the relationship manager. It's already had to think about it and we have to see if we like what we're seeing. Okay. 
suburb slicer connecting via the suburbs all and it's detected that those two are the same or at least they have the same contents and column names and then we're going to have to tell that this one here that it's bi-directional and what we should see now if we go back to the model is this is the original slicer and it's being powered by this suburb value in the suburbs column. but now if you look here we have new tables and one of them is called suburbs all so I'm going to drag that in and I'm going to remove that suburbs and look what we've got we now have 12 entities 11 suburbs and an all button so if I click on one of these doors point double bay great now I click on all and there we are we're back at all of them so there is the all button and the boss is happy it's a very simple approach to it power query is not as intimidating the intellisense in it is fantastic and if you make mistakes in power query the way that you can step through it like a recipe you can quickly identify the point where your modeling has gone wrong or the query has gone wrong or the components are not matching it's a fantastic way to do it so anyway every day is a school day i hope you learned something there